Threading demo time, everybody. Here we go. All right, we start off with our bobbin, okay? And we have to remember to take our thread up and over to the left, okay? Up and over to the left. Remember, leftovers are good, as we've been talking about in class. Leftovers are good. So, first thing you do, drop your bobbin right down into your bobbin case. Okay, just drop it down in there, making sure the string, the thread is going over and to the left. Then if you look really closely, you can't see it in the video, but if you look at your personal machine, you can see there's a little metal piece right here on the bobbin case. Your thread needs to go underneath that metal piece. So if you hold your bobbin still and pull your thread to the left, it'll pop right down under that metal piece and you can just leave your thread hanging on the left side there. The next thing you're going to do is take your spool of thread. It doesn't have to be the same color for our threading practice, but typically when you're sewing on your actual project, these two items, your bobbin thread and your spool thread, are going to be the same color. Your spool of thread is going to go up here at the top of your machine on your spool pin. So you take off your spool pin cap, slide your spool of thread on there, and replace the cap. Okay. Then you find the end of your thread and give that a little pull. And you are going to find your first thread guide. And that thread guide is right over here. Um, I call this my dinosaur thread guide because if you look at it from this side, um, coming from the spool over towards the thread guide, it looks just like a dinosaur's mouth. So what we're going to do is go in through the dinosaur's mouth and then back around the eye. So up in through the dinosaur's mouth and back around the eye. Okay. Next, you need to go around your thread tension disc, which is just a thread guide. That's what you guys know it by. So we're going to loop around this one time. Make sure you go in this direction around your um, thread guide. So around that one time and down through the little metal um, piece there. Then all you need to do is follow your arrows. There's an arrow down here and an arrow up here. So I'm going to go down and up. Next, I need to go into my take-up lever, which should be right at the top of my machine. If it's not, I need to turn my hand wheel towards myself to make sure it gets there. Um, right now, I'm starting on my right side because I just went down and up, and I'm right on the right side. So I start on the right side, pull my thread to the left side, pull down and up. And the thread will just pop right into the eye of the take-up lever all by itself, but you have to remember Start on the right side, go to the left side, pull down, and then up, and it'll pop right into the lever. All right, the next we go right down, back where we came from, and follow straight down into our curly Q thread guide. All right, and we just swirl around two times. Now notice, I'm going to take that out and do it one more time. Notice I swirled and I went left and moved to the right, okay? If you swirl the opposite direction, what's going to happen is you are going to knot up right around the bar of the thread guide, and you will end up with a knot instead of just threading through your thread guide. So make sure that you swirl the proper direction and that it's just free flowing through that thread guide. The next thing and the last thing before you go through your needle is to go through the hook thread guide above the needle. So you hold your thread in your left hand and hook it up over the hook. Okay. Finally, you're going to thread your needle. And I'm going to go ahead and switch sides in the video so that I can do that because I can't do it from the direction I was sitting. All right, now the thing you need to make sure here is that it goes straight from here, the curly Q thread guide, straight to your hook thread guide, straight down to the needle, front to back. 
It shouldn't be wrapping around your needle or wrapping around the presser foot or wrapping around um, your screw here that holds your needle in. Make sure it just goes straight through all those things. If you're wrapping around anything, your thread will not be able to move freely, which means you will not be able to stitch properly. Okay, the next step is going to be to get this thread up through the little hole in your needle plate. Um, in order to do that, you wouldn't be able to just thread it through there. So in order to get this thread up through here, you're going to need to hold your top thread, just your top thread, not your top thread and your bottom thread, just your top thread, and you're going to turn your hand wheel all the way around one full time. The way to know that you turned it around one full time is that your take-up lever will move all the way down and all the way back to the top of your machine um, and that will be one full rotation. So you'll hold this here and you will turn your hand wheel one full time. So I'm going to move back to the other side so that I can do this. So you'll hold your thread and turn one full time. And if you you can't probably see it in the video, but if you watch carefully while you're doing this on your actual machine, you will see this top thread actually loops around and catches your bottom thread. And it's pretty cool to watch. So make sure you watch that when you're doing it in real life. Okay? And that happens every single time you make a stitch on your machine. That top thread loops around and catches the bottom thread and loops around and catches the bottom thread and that's what makes your stitches on your fabric. Okay, Now, as you can see, by holding that top thread, I've pulled a loop of my bottom thread up. So I need to go ahead and grab that loop and pull it to the top. And now I don't have my thread hanging out here anymore. It's coming through the top of my needle plate, which is what I wanted. Now I can close my needle plate, or slide plate, excuse me, close my slide plate, and the final thing I need to do is go ahead and push my thread down and to the back of my machine. Okay, it needs to be down between your um, presser foot and under the presser foot and to the back. Okay, so it can't be hanging over it, it has to be under it. After you have done all of those steps, you need to test to make sure that what you have done by threading your machine was proper. Uh, if you forget to test and go right on to sewing on your project, it may not um, have been done right and then you will end up ripping stitches out of your project. If you just test on a scrap piece of fabric like this, then you won't have to rip it out because if it was a mistake, you can just leave the mistake in the scrap fabric. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that looks like. You just put your presser foot down. Make sure your settings are correct. You should be on a straight stitch, center needle position, and on um, the straight pattern selector as well. We usually stitch on about a two and a half stitch length. That's a good stitch length to go. Um, make sure you hold your fabric in place. You're going to go forward a couple stitches and then you're going to back stitch. And even though this is just our tester or a sample, it's good to get in the habit of testing um, and back stitching on all samples. Okay, to back stitch, you hold in your push button reverse and then let it go to go back forward again. When you get to the end, you will need to repeat the back stitching process to tie a knot. And when you finish, remember your take up lever always needs to stop at the top. Nice and catchy, stop at the top, shouldn't ever forget that. When you're done, you lift up the presser foot with your presser foot lever at the back of your machine and just go ahead and pull out your thread. There is a um, thread cutter on the back of your um, presser foot bar there, or you can use your clippers to cut the threads. Okay, So you should always check to make sure that the stitches look um, neat and even, 
and they're not pulling your fabric or they're not loose and they should look like that on both sides. Finally, um, you shouldn't leave long threads hanging from your project. So you always need to trim those off right up close next to your fabric. And because you backstitched, your stitches will stay in nice and tight. They will not come out. So you can go ahead and clip those on both sides. All right. Got some frays on our fabric. We can clip those too. And that is how to thread your machine. If you need to watch parts of the video or all of the video again, you can watch it as many times as you need to get the process down.